We've been a leader in banking for more than 100 years. You'll find us here, at home, on your phone, and everywhere you go. Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Sponsored by Renaissance Bank. Good morning and welcome to Daily Journal News Break for Tuesday, February 27th. I'm your host, Chris Kiefer, and we're going to take a look at the top news and sports stories from Northeast Mississippi. But first, let's start with your weather forecast. Today we're looking at partly cloudy skies with a high of 59 and a low of 42. There's a 20% chance of rain. Looking ahead at your three-day outlook, Wednesday, partly cloudy, high of 57, low of 41. Thursday, 100% chance of rain, high of 60 and a low of 39. And on Friday, sunny skies with a high of 59 and a low of 35. Let's take a look now at today's top headlines. The state, Senate, and House have pursued different routes to create a second county court judge in Lee County. The ultimate fate of the proposal remains unclear. The Lee County Board of Supervisors asked the legislature early this year for the authority to create a new judicial post. The county currently has only one judge to deal with civil, criminal, and youth court cases in county court. Initially, supervisors hope to put the second post up for election this fall when voters will already have a chance to fill the current county court judge. However, local support for the second judge may not be as certain as it once was. District 2 Supervisor Mike Smith, who is currently serving as the board president, said he no longer sees a need to have a second judge elected this year. Smith said that since incumbent judge Charlie Brett is retiring, it may be best to let his successor get into that office first and then determine the need. Meanwhile, the Senate and House have each taken up different bills that would allow Lee County to create the new position. Those bills are still working through the legislative process. A major water supply line in Lee County suffered damage on Monday morning, but repairs have been substantially completed. Significant shifting on Highway 178 near Moorville damaged a Northeast Mississippi Regional Water Supply District water line. Though originally described by local officials as a line break, officials later said the issue appeared to have been seepage from the line. The line transports treated water to major customers in Lee County who purchase water from the district, including the city of Tupelo. Work crews shut off the line Monday morning so that repairs could begin forcing Tupelo and other district customers onto backup storage tanks. In addition to those storage tanks, Tupelo Water and Light also has emergency wells. The supply district also maintains its own storage tanks in Lee County. Even so, the city of Tupelo asked customers to conserve water until the line break was repaired. The damaged line transports water from the Tom Bigby River, which the supply district treats at a facility in Peppertown. No boil water notice is anticipated. The Public Service Commission's Hire Mississippi initiative kicks off Thursday. It is designed to urge public utilities to hire in-state companies. Northern District Public Service Commissioner Brandon Presley of Nettleton touted the program Monday at the Capitol Press Corps luncheon. Presley is a Democrat and in his third term on the three-member Public Service Commission that regulates public utilities. He said the five largest public utilities spent $870 million in fiscal year 2017 on contracts for operations and maintenance. Only 30% of those funds went to Mississippi companies. Presley said he wanted to see companies from Oklahoma instead of Oklahoma winning contracts to provide services like cutting trees for power lines or laying pipes for natural gas lines. Presley said the Public Service Commission is not asking the utility companies to award a contract to a company just based on the fact it is located in Mississippi. But he said the Mississippi company should know of the potential jobs. Under the higher Mississippi regulation, public utilities will be responsible for letting the in-state companies know why they did not receive the contract. And in sports, football practice begins today at Ole Miss with complete clarity regarding the head coach. Spring drills begin this afternoon. They are the first workouts for Coach Matt Luke since he was promoted in late November. Among the areas of focus this spring will be improving linebacker play on a defense that gave up about 245 rushing yards a game last season. That ranked next to last in the SEC on 123rd out of 129 FBS schools. Improvement could hinge on linebacker play where there is a new position coach, a handful of returnees, and a mid-year junior college signee in Vernon Dasher. Five other December signees will go through spring drills. 
Those include junior college defensive tackle Hal Northern and running back Scott Phillips, plus freshman quarterback Matt Corral, wide receiver Demarcus Gregory, and running back Isaiah Woolard. The annual Grove Bowl to wrap up spring workouts is set for Saturday, March 7th at 1 p.m. And that does it for Newsbreak on this Tuesday. Don't forget that this show is just one of the many online offerings courtesy of the Daily Journal that gets you news off the page and on the go. Watch the Capital View webcast each week for the latest on state politics with Bobby Harrison. On Monday's episode, he talked about the possibility of Mississippi having two U.S. Senate elections this year and the potential candidates to seek the office. He also talked about bills that would limit the state attorney general, a possible cigarette tax hike, and the school funding formula rewrite. Watch it in the video gallery at djournal.com or on our Facebook page. Any story discussed on Newsbreak can be found in your daily journal or online at djournal.com, where you can also catch a new episode of Newsbreak each weekday morning at 7 a.m. Thanks for joining us. I'm Chris Kiefer. Have a great Tuesday.